Hi, professional angler Jim Carroll here. I'm in a lake that I have never fished before with the uh, legendary <laughs> Keith Kamias. And I've never fished it before. <laughs> my friend Keith. And actually we're on, this, on the set, as it were, of the Next Bite TV show. And we're gonna show you a little bit today, just a little bit, because Keith doesn't want to show too much of how a Next Bite TV show is filmed. Uh, we've heard there's just a ton of fish in here, like you can't go wrong, so I guess we'll see. I, I think they'll see a little bit of Greg too, I bet, huh? our cameraman, so that'll be good. Yeah, so we're going to have a little bit of fun today, and I hope you enjoy it. Wait a second now. This is Keith doing the opening. He's a real pro, so he'll probably get it on the first take. <laughs> go, baby! Hey, I'm fishing today with Jim Carroll. Now, Jim and I fish walleye tournaments. And one thing that uh, we had happen last week was we were up in a tournament where it was a particularly tough bite, just not a lot of fish being caught. And Jim said to me, hey, if you want to come up to the Devil's Lake area, they're catching like 100 fish a day. You can come up and just use my boat. And I thought to myself, I could use a good bite. So I came up and, and it's been really good. I mean... Cut. <laughs> Catch one. There's hardly no fish in here. I don't know if I can. It's like a Canadian fly-in in here. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like every cast. And you don't have to fly in. Yeah. Take your own boat. More oh. corn. More corn stock. Corn stock. Got the corn. Got the corn. Walleye's in the corn. Wow. Two casts without fish? Time to quit. That's odd. It's the got them all. They're more towards the bank now. You miss? One miss. One miss. Good news is it will probably come back. Didn't come back. It's the longest. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I was just about to say that's the longest you've gone without catching one. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you are. Laugh out loud. <laughs> oh, perfect release. Yeah, hey, that that was a fast 50. <laughs> okay. When are we ready? So I'm getting a lot of questions lately on on the difference between. Um, I'm getting a lot of questions lately on the difference between Fireline and Berkeley's new Nanofill. Um, they do have a lot of similarities. Uh, both of them are a no-stretch line, so you get a lot of sensation. Um, the other thing is, is that they're both very thin lines. So especially if you're fishing in current or you're fishing in a lot of wind like we are today, the line just doesn't get moved around as much, so you get better contact with your jig or whatever you're fishing. So again, both very, very sensitive lines. The difference between the two of them is, is that Nanofill is a very, very slick, smooth line. Uh, much, much slicker than even Fireline. And so the applications I really like to use it for are especially when I'm doing things like this, casting in wind with real light jigs. I just find I can cast it a lot further. It doesn't get blown around in the wind as much. Um, and I keep real good contact with that jig. So casting light jigs is one thing. The other thing I use it a lot for is casting crankbaits especially the crankbaits that a lot of walleye fishermen use are very, very light crankbaits. Uh, they typically don't cast very far. So you need to have a line that casts a long way. And that's really the call out point of, of Nanofill is that you can cast it a long, long way and uh, get longer distance on those casts. So. We're up to fish 100 and I think Keith caught about 79 of them because he's been throwing the crankbait. But it's been, <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. Look at your poor hands. <laughs> tore up like that. 
All right, here's cameraman Greg getting the underwater housing ready. This is a process that takes about 20 minutes when we could be fishing, right, Greg? This is actually a depth charge that I'm going to one day place near Jim Carroll's boat and have it just explode. <laughs> always make me look there. so good. You, back there. Okay. Spooling the rod. <laughs> and this shot took us, what, about 20 minutes to set up? <laughs> Making movies. Making movies. <laughs> Riding the ladder on the boat. You know if you fall off, you're in about eight feet of water Do here. I look like LeVar Burton from uh, Star Trek Next Generation? <laughs> Uh, you, class this place up, man. You cracked me up. Up, up, up. There you go. Perfect. Okay, roll. All right, so wind's picking up a little bit, so we decided to go to a real windy bank here. And actually, it's even throwing a spinner bait, so they're getting in there pretty thick. Really great fishing here. I mean, when you can catch 100 fish a day or more, you get some nice walleyes like that. Great trip. Okay, this place is chock full of fish. I'm going to cast once, maybe twice, and I'm going to have a fish. You watch. Fail. <laughs> okay, one more. Maybe Keith caught them all in this spot before me. He was up here just wailing on them. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> this is how it's been all day. We're up to about fish, uh, I don't even know, 150 now or something. Lots of these, there he goes. Lots of fun here in a legendary lake in North Dakota. Well, we're wiped out. <laughs> right, Keith? <laughs> we are done. <laughs> that was a, a long day of fishing, and my hands are pretty much shredded. My little fish counter is 205, and that's fish in hand, because uh, the camera guy was kind of being a, a fish Nazi about it, not netable. I think we'd have probably had 240 or 250 netables, but we had to touch them with our hand, or we didn't get to count them. So 205 fish that we handled today. Uh, it's just been an amazing day. And, uh, and a lot of fun. So until next time, I hope you get a chance to enjoy North Dakota's great outdoors.